All right, today we're going to look at a little bit of bar reconditioning. This bar, as you can see, has been uh, quite worn. You can see these little grooves right here. I'm trying to get real close so you can see that right there. The, um, the chain kind of wore down in it, and if you feel it, you can drag your finger. Now, you got to be real careful because it's sharp as a razor, these sides can be. But what we're feeling is this bar actually mushroomed out. You can maybe even see it right there, how it's mushroomed out over the side and it uh <clears throat> makes it difficult to cut it'll do you can even see some of it right here and what it'll do it makes it hard for the bar to get through there and chain to cut through the wood things like that and it just it's it's just ready to be reconditioned right here you can even see where it kind of chipped off a little bit and what we're going to do is uh, go through this guy clean it up real good and first step is to uh, again clean it got a little tool here for that and this is a uh, really interesting little guy. It, it does lots of little tool jobs. It'll it'll let you sh see how high your your depth gauges are. I've got a chain here. I'll show you real quick. I'm sure you can see there. Let me bring you a little closer for this. The, um, if you lay this on top of your, and you know, this is not a really good one to do it with. But, but you can still, there's a carbide chain we've got. But you can see how that, that should be even when you lay it on top of the cutters. I've got a couple broken cutters here, got into some metal. But um, this should lay right on top and it should be smooth. And that lets you know, get it down there where you can see it a little better. That should be smooth right across the top of it. And it is. And, and if you've ground them down, again, a carbide, it takes a long time to ground them down to be a uh, issue because of the, uh, the, <clears throat> the wear characteristics of those carbide cutters. But the, um, still can test them there. When we pot, when we sharpen these, it's really just polishing them. We're not really taking much material, but if you're working with a standard chain, it doesn't take long to really get that thing down to where it's a, uh, an issue to where your, uh, your depth gauges are keeping your cutter from from pulling any wood and that's it acts like a plane as it goes across it takes a little shape a little tiny piece of wood each one of these little guys does it works kind of like a hand plane again and it just takes that little bit and if you try to take too much well of course you can't push it through it it takes too much material it takes too much effort and you end up tearing your saw up running it too hot burning the clutch out of it lots of different problems there and if you don't have it uh, if you don't take enough material at a time, it's just just make really fine chips and make a lot of real fine sawdust and, and even smoke. It'll burn its way through it. So it, it's important to get that setting right where you need it. Uh, another thing this does is it tells us the angle that the, the chain is sharpened. So I'll bring you back over for this again. And um, you can set it down on here and it'll tell you. See that right there is sharpened at a 30 degree angle. And uh, of course the back side that would be 10 degrees and the first right here 35 then zero 10 would be a is a common for a uh a ripping chain if you're doing a lot of uh would be oh like uh doing dovetail jig stuff that would be uh, dovetailing things that would uh do a lot of ripping i've got a chain set up for that and uh, or if you're doing alaskan sawmill stuff so that, that's kind of some of the jobs this little guy does right here it's got all kinds of neat little things on it here it'll tell us these angles here where the uh, um, hook angle would be, things like that. But the part I want to go over for our bar is on the tip. And the, uh, <clears throat> this is an extremely handy thing because a lot of times people say, I'm a bar, bar is just wore out. Well, this, 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 as you can tell, is far from worn out, but it is very dirty and in very much need of some, um, some maintenance. So first thing we're going to do is clean this thing out. You can see all this crud that's down in there. And uh, it's really, it, it just gets packed in there over time and oil gets it down there and gets it stuck. And you can see I've got a hard spot right there. And what I do, I just get this thing and, and angle it. You can see, I don't like to pull to the front and pack that sprocket area full of crud. So usually try to start up here at the front and work our way back. Now it feels pretty good back to about right there. I can feel the bottom of that channel. Now <clears throat> we've got a light here at the shop. I'm kind of lift that thing up this is a led light panel for a um, suspended ceiling and man it does a great job of casting light you can see down in there if i can get this angled right 
I'm not sure if that helps you, but you can see the bottom of that groove with this light. And I tell you, that is a phenomenal thing. Typically, you know, we do good to see the bottom of it with a, with a handheld flashlight or a pocket flashlight. And that thing right there is a game changer for working on, on saws and, and things like that. And I really, really like it. So anyway, what we're gonna do is just take a minute and dig all this junk out of here. It's really impacted. And you can see some of this stuff that's just, you know, crammed down in there. And just take a few minutes. And if we leave it in there, I guess it'll explain why we're cleaning it. Because, I mean, of course, me, I like things clean no matter what. But this is a, uh, it really does have a purpose because the oil gets in there. And um, now this bar, I'm feeling, it does not have a well down in it. Some bars have a little well right here that the oil will lay down in. However, it does have this little hole right here, and that's where the um, oil goes in. Now, the one on this side is down here, the one on the other side's up here. So I'll bring you over here, let you look at it real quick. It is right here. It's very important that that little guy's clean. Now you can kind of see this elongated piece of wear right here, and that's from wearing on the saw. That is the oiling port on a, on a steel chainsaw as long, and that way no matter where your bar is at, it'll still hit it. And it, it, it oil pump sends oil through that elongated slot into this hole, and then it builds up in here and it carries it. Of course, it carries it to the tip. A steel chainsaw bar does not need to be lubed. The tip doesn't need to be greased. A lot of uh, different brands do. Oregon, uh, I think Husqvarna. Anyway, they uh, you have a little port up here, look similar to that. You have a little hand uh, pump and throw some grease to it and it, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it will um, lube that thing. But the way these are made up, they don't uh, require that. So it, again, we wanna make sure that all that's out of there so that oil can flow to our tip real easy. Now this tip feels pretty good. This, has a, this is a, a roller tip or roller sprocket on there. And um, it is, we know that by seeing rollomatic on the bar if we're blind enough that we can't see that. So there are different kinds. I think I have, let me see if we got one here. This is a hard tip bar. You can see it does not have a sprocket in it. It is a duramatic. And uh, again, it has little extra hard hard material around the tip of it there that way you can uh, uh, it, it just wears right on that thing doesn't have any of that mess now I, I talked to you earlier about that 10 degree angle this is our bar set up to do dovetail jig work and you can see it's turned into a ripping chain at 10 degrees you can see how flat that angle is right there on there it is horrible for trying to buck wood but it's uh, but for ripping it, it does a really good job let me put these guys back up here real fast. And then we'll get started. So our next step here is to um, start cleaning this up. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure that the top is flat. If it's not flat, it'll cause our chain to lean. And if our chain is leaning on the top of this bar, it won't cut straight. You'll, you'll notice somebody say, my, my bar keeps cutting this half circle mess. Well, a couple of things can cause that. One of them not sharpened evenly. One, typically, if you hand sharpen, you'll favor one side. You'll either be a really good right hand or a really good left hand, but seldom is somebody really good at both. So you'll, you'll see the chain starting to cut one way, or if you've got some, some cutters damaged on one side, you'll see it start to have that arc. Third cause can be if this bar isn't level on top. Now it's, again, it's just one of those things that happens with wear. It can end up wearing unevenly. Um, several things can cause that, but what I wanna uh, to show you is this neat little tool that we have here. And this is a, a bar file. It has a, a plate here that rides down the side of the bar that makes sure that it stays straight up and down and per perfectly perpendicular to the top. And this little file, these little guys are, in, you know, you get new ones when you wear them out. But this little guy just rides right on top here. You push it tight up to it and it has a direction. You have to push it in or else it's just floating around there. And you always pick it up on the return stroke. You always pick that fella up because it'll clog up the file if you just work it back and forth. So we'll just keep working this guy down through here. You can feel it bite. 
already you can start to see some really shiny spots on here now these really shiny spots are the high spots you can see some rust down in there and this bar was one that was going to be thrown away because it was wore out and junk and i want to show you today how we can take this wore out junk bar and uh just do some maintenance on it and be back in business and and you can wear a bar out this one's just not worn out it, it still has some more life left in it and uh we want to be good stewards and not not wear it not uh just throw it in a scrap bin if uh, there's still some use to be had now you can see right here this side is done it has this shiny yet dull look on it so that's what we're after now this bar had rust on it and we we see this again it's reflective and dull if this bar wasn't rusty if we had just pulled it off of the saw it would be reflective but really super shiny polished so what we're looking for is again this is kind of a not perfect example of what we're looking for because is it was you know in a scrap bin but the um if you're doing one of these saws that just came off and just needs fixed real you know brought up to uh and again if you do this pretty often it's not a bad job because all you're doing is just slicking it back up working both sides and you're ready to go this one is going to take a little bit of time because it's never been maintenance so what we're looking for is this dull reflectiveness again off the light we're seeing that reflectiveness, but it's a dull look all the way down it and and you see we're starting to get a little bit here on the outside here a little bit over here some up here and all this area right here is perfect so it's just we're just going to keep working it and and we want it very true all the way across so we're just going to keep hitting these spots you can hear that thing bite and you can you really feel it I, I hate that you're not not able to feel this in person through the whole interweb there but it's it's nice and shiny and that side we have a groove still and then as we slide back now this side is nice and shiny we have a groove over here so that chain has been doing a little bit of wiggling as it goes down through there and i imagine the uh this is going to cut a whole lot better than it did right before they took it off because that chain will be a lot more stabilized so well i just want to show you that a little bit all right so now that we have the top and the bottom of the bar all straightened up we got some little bits of rust on here and these were just from where it was sitting around in the uh, uh, scrap bin and uh, i'm just going to uh, polish that rust off of there it take it just a second Get that all cleaned up good That'll just make it go through a little lot nicer than it is put back in service. Now you can see the ends, edges are, are not sticking out anywhere. Everything there looks really good. Now we've been able to take this, uh, it was once quite ugly, bar headed for, again, the scrap bin. Just clean this up real good there and be able to put it back into service and uh, it's not a big deal but these uh pro series bars are not cheap they, uh, they're definitely worth working on and you can tell a, a good pro bar by the tip insert in it a low uh quality bar will just have the little sprockets here it won't have this replaceable tip and again you can change out this whole tip and um, keep running your bar because again there's a lot of material in there you use if your tip should wear out you can just rivet a new uh, tip right into your bar so that's why those are made like that so you can replace them so i'll clean that a bit of deep right there oh yeah great Sounds like tomorrow's project is backing in here. We got a fun little uh, thing, a little video tomorrow for you guys, and uh, not sure when it'll come out, but uh, we're going to try to do some footage tomorrow. Hope you guys will enjoy that too. All right, so now we've got 
all the rest off the bar. One more bit right there. Right down. Excellent. So now we'll uh, we'll take this and we'll blow the. Uh, all the metal out of it make sure we don't spin this too fast remember don't sit there and hold the air blow gotta let that thing spin till it's, it loses its mind and um, we get that done we'll put a little wd-40 on it and uh, get it back to the customer and they can uh, they can hold it for a spare or put it right back into service hope that was helpful and uh, again now we have our bar here this is a 20 inch um, um, 50 um, gauge bar and the uh, 72 drive link 3 8 pitch so we have our 50 gauge rather 3 8 pitch and and all of the steel part numbers there on the side tells us everything about it and tells us 20 inch drive tooth 72 and uh, pretty neat stuff again we have our and this is a german built bar um, again they're the they're the real high end ones you'll find on pro saws that show up so there we have it all ready to go and again another thing i did mention earlier is i usually flip the bar every time i change a chain and of course i run carbide chains and uh, so that's a little bit longer than if you're running just a standard chain but every time i change them i flip the bar and that wears the other side um, so you primarily you cut most on the bottom side you don't do tons of 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 cutting on the top of your bar or back bar and you know going up into a cut to just maybe cut a little relief so that you can cut it it doesn't tear out or, or gator mouth on you so primarily you're you're sawing on the bottom of the bar so if we flip that every time we just keep changing that wear surface and of course we have the oil ports there located so that it hits right every time